Hi, everybody. I want to show you a fascinating clip of the son of Hamas, as he's known, uh, Mossab Hassan Yusuf, who is the son of Sheikh Hassan Yusuf, who is one of the co-founders and leaders of Hamas, who fled Hamas, ended up working with Israel, and has been an amazing advocate for Israel, and has shown us that people do have moral agency, even if they're fed a diet of hatred, as hard as it may be to break out of that. Um, but he's an incredibly inspiring moral figure. And people are hearing him speak in this recent conflict of Israel and Hamas, but not as many people know so much about his own journey and what it must have been like growing up amidst such hatred and uh, just perverse ways of thinking. And there's a brilliant clip that I24 did where they spoke to him about this and about you know what it was like growing up among um, a Hamas ideology. And I want to share with you some of that now. So have, have a look. He doesn't come to Israel much, to the place he fled from 17 years ago. But this week, Mossab Hassan Yosef, the son of a senior Hamas official in the West Bank, arrived all the way from the United States, and he's ready and loaded. After October 7, there was no way, you know, not to come and stand with the people. I saw the massacre uh, footage, which, you know, changed my life. My life would never be the same after October 7. It looks like you're disappointed in a personal level. Because it is very personal. It's very personal. You were very angry. I was very angry, and I'm still angry. For many years, I spared my father. For many years, I gave him justification. I saved his life. And it was a mistake. It was a mistake. It was a mistake. He's insisting in staying in this sick ideology. And you think he has an idea what happened on October 7? I need to take him and stick his head in the blood of the massacre. He may feel for a little bit what happened on October 7. We know him as the Green Prince, the boy who grew up in Ramallah, the eldest son of Sheikh Hassan Yosef Khalil, one of the founders of Hamas. Terrorism was the family business. The father divided most of his time between the West Bank and Israeli prison, and the prince continued the family tradition, buying weapons and planning terror attacks. But when he was 17 years old, everything changed. He was arrested and for the first time saw prison from the inside and the brutality of Hamas. In those days, suicide attacks became all the rage. For Masab, this crossed a red line. When I stood against suicide bombing attacks some 20 years ago, this was madness in a society where the majority, the vast majority agreed. I disagreed. And that was my punishment for just to think differently. In order for me to express myself freely meant for me to be executed. At this point, the Shin Bet entered the picture. The organization managed to turn Masab, and he became an extraordinary intelligence source. For 10 years, he lied to his family and worked secretly for Israel, preventing terror attacks and saving many lives. When Sheikh Hassan Yosef discovered the act of treason, Masab was already overseas. For my father, the, the biggest uh, threat for his existence is to lose his honor, to lose his public image. This is the challenge uh, that I gave to him. He invested his entire energy, his entire life to maintain his public image, his status. You know, now you are the father of the greatest traitor of the cause of your people. You'll have to deal with it. If there's anyone who really knows how to explain what Hamas really is, it's him. Were you surprised? By what happened on October 7th? Look, Hamas brutality was not a strange thing for me. Uh, I witnessed Hamas brutality firsthand for a very long time when I was in prison. They tortured people, they killed people in the worst possible way. For suspicion of collaborating with Israel, I cannot pretend that I did not hear their voices. 
People were screaming day and night in pain of a crime that they haven't or hadn't committed. None of them had a relationship with Israel. Knowing what they do to people in prison, were you afraid for your father's life when you came out in public about your story? Of course, it was a very dangerous uh, situation, but also he's uh, a top leader. So usually, who get, uh, gets punished in that society? Those who don't have power. But those who have power, they get away. Really is amazing that he managed to get himself out of this. I mean, we hear similar things from uh, Loe al-Sharif, who was, is an Arab uh, Muslim peace activist who we interviewed on JTV and he um, grew up on a diet of hate, being shown the protocols of the elders of Zion as being basically gospel truth. Of course, it's a forgery, but um, he managed to get himself out of this hate-filled mindset by actually being just exposed to Jews. He stayed with a Jewish family unintentionally and ended up realizing that he'd been fed lies. Same thing with Sohel Ahmed. Another person we interviewed on JTV a few months ago who grew up in the UK with parents who were radicals supporting Hamas. And uh, just by meeting Jews who he was doing a job for and also just listening to his conscience. And it sounds like what's even more impressive about Mossab is that he wasn't really even exposed to Jews so much. It was more just his conscience that was telling him that, you know, this is this is wrong. This is evil. And, um, and I think because there are people like this, also I think because we have access to the internet today where people can listen to, to people, including people like, you know, you and me, um, there's nothing, I, as far as I'm aware, to stop a Palestinian from watching one of our videos. And hopefully um, he is someone that can pave the way um, in giving us a sense of optimism and hope that people actually can change and that for many people, some people are poisoned with hate beyond help, but in many cases, I believe that the hate towards Jews can often just be a, uh, as a result of mystery surrounding the Jewish people. And what JTV is trying to do is to help in the demystification process and hopefully inspire a sense of positive connection to Jewish people and Jewish wisdom, which has something essential to offer every single human being, Jew or non-Jew. And so I think we really should learn from people like Mossab that we shouldn't throw our hands in the air in despair. Rather, we should know that when you continue to share the truth, to educate and demystify, while never you know, compromising your morals, um, then really good things can happen. I'm Ollie Annisfeld and you're watching JTV.